All right, Carlos. So uh, thanks a lot for joining me. And, um, you know, we're pleas pleased to do this uh, profile on your very fine work there at UOG. Um, right off the bat, like in terms of COVID relief, I remember that UOG was uh, one of the first organizations when the pandemic started. You guys had that um, uh, the telethon like right away and you said you were raising money for PPE and, um, you know, trying to get awareness out and just really rally the community, the alumni, what have you. Um, what else has been done within the context of of really trying to provide aid for our island during its most needed time? Sure, um, all of this started with a simple car ride with Dr. Margaret, the Tori Uchima from the School of Health. And mm -hmm. early on in the pandemic, there was a call center that was stood up down in Aganya and wasn't quite the right setup that she was hoping for. So she asked me just to go take a look. And from that first visit to the call center, um, we eventually transferred up, them up to the University of Guam set up the medical hotline here. And so we first assisted with just entertaining calls with people um, from people with questions about the pandemic. And then just working with the nurses and hearing, you know, seeing everything that was happening, we noticed there was a need for food and to provide the frontline workers with some kind of relief while they were pulling 15, 16, 18 hour shifts. And so we started looking at the community for just food contributions and People from all, all over were willing to help. And just through some of the coordinated efforts here at UOG, we provided over 13,000 meals to frontline workers. And that predated the telethon. And so then we needed other ways to sustain that operation. And so then Norm Analista came up and Dr. Price came up with this telethon idea. And from that, we raised over $60,000 to continue the effort of providing PPEs and meal service or whatever we could for all of our frontliners. And then after the telethon, we kept the call center running. We expanded that to contact tracing, outbreak management. And now um, the last or the latest effort is helping to support the vaccination clinic with the GUM, the Guam Army National Guard and the data entry with public health. And so throughout the pandemic, early on, during and through the vaccination, UOG has kind of raised their hand and said, hey, you know, we want to be a part of the help and part of the, the getting Guam out of this pandemic. And so it's been a long, what is it now, 12 months since mm -hmm. we first had the lockdown in March. And so we're, we're hoping we've turned a corner. We're hoping this vaccine gets into enough people for herd immunity and then we can get back to life as we once knew it. Yes. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. Now, if there is anything that came out of the pandemic, in my own personal opinion, I believe it's that, that we as Guamanians really got the opportunity to reconnect with the concept of enough Malik, right? And taking care of our neighbors and, and really providing for people um, across the island. And, you know, as a graduate of, of CBBA, um, I always knew that, you know, it's talked about so often that, you know, you think locally, act globally, and, you know, you take care of, of everybody like that. Maybe to the, you, and we say it so often, maybe to the point where um, we kind of take it for granted and it's more theoretical than anything, but um, what did it mean for you and your team to spearhead that effort and, um, you know, really encourage the rest of the community. Cause you're like, you know, we're not in this as a PR event, we're really doing it because it's the right thing to do. And we really want to take a leadership position in taking care of our community. Sure. Um, feels great to be a part of the help. And when working with the, the National Guard recently, they talk about being deployed into foreign places and always trying to help communities abroad. But this is the first effort that we actually get to help our own people, our own brothers and sisters, our aunties, uncles, and, and, and co-workers. And so the, the highlight of being at the vaccination clinic is when you see people in the observation area just waiting for their 15 or 30 minutes, you get to reconnect with people you haven't seen throughout the pandemic. And, and they're so grateful for the efforts that we're doing to get people vaccinated. And so it's a tremendous feeling of, of, of um, pride that we can be a part of this help. And I, I don't know any other way to put it. And then other than that, we're, it's just a small piece. And then we look back on this in 15, 20, 30 years, we'll know that we had an active role in fighting the pandemic. So I think there's a lot of pride that goes into the effort and the work that we do. And UOG has done so much, Carlos, um, throughout the last 12 months, you know, when it comes to organizing events to raise money or making cash and in-kind donations and contributions to donating, um, human resources or, um, but probably what most people um, thought was the most obvious thing and probably the most impactful was 
just basically saying, you know, we've got this huge facility in the field house and everything. Let's use this as, as the clinical center and everything. How, how difficult was that decision to make for you? <laughs> not, not difficult at all. There is nothing more important that, that we can be doing right now than vaccinating our community. So this has priority over everything and anything that it was slated for the field house. Um, when you look at the mainland where they have Yankee Stadium, and so this is our Yankee Stadium here on Guam, where we can service a number of people. It's centrally located and the facilities is, is it's perfect for what we're trying to accomplish. Hmm. So yes, it was an easy decision to make, absolutely. Hmm. Some would say a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, no-brainer, absolutely. And when, and even even though we practice and we live in Afamalik with every fiber of our being as, as Guamanians and everything, um, it's also important to take care of of our own. And one thing that I noticed was that UOG did such an exemplary job of saying, you know, we don't want to impose any additional hardships because everybody's going through things on our students and for you know um, kids on certain kind of like uh, athletic scholarships and everything. We said, you know, your scholarship is is intact, it's preserved, and. Uh, for faculty, we're like, you know, we want to make sure that even though we're going to change things up, that you guys really won't have to worry about about the future. So um, can you kind of take me through like the thought process of when it came time to say, you know, we've got our own little UOG micro community and we have to make sure we take care of them as well and not knowing what's going to happen week to week. Sure. Um, we always have to be reminded of what is our mission, right? And of course, that is to provide high level education to our community, you know, the school reset beat. And so, um, but we would never be able to fully accomplish or pursue that mission until we get this fix in place. And the fix is getting everyone vaccinated. And so just being mindful of, and we're still open, um, classes are still running in an online format, and there are students still coming to the campus to utilize some of the green spaces or to meet with financial aid or the registrar. And so it's a balance and because the, the um, the vaccination clinic only happens in the afternoon. It gives us the ability to work with the students in the morning and to accomplish a lot of that mission while still being able to help the island community. And so just staying in communication with our senior vice president and with our president as to the ongoing day-to-day um, -day activities with the vaccination clinic and how that could potentially impact what we're trying to do as a university. But everyone's been very supportive. Um, everyone's raised their hand in any way they can help, whether it be financially or giving of their time to volunteer at the clinic or just um, being able to um, just assist with everything that's happening around the campus. Hmm. A tremendous team effort from a lot of people across the campus. And then going forward, and this ties in perfectly to the theme of this year's uh, Charter Day festivities is the theme being transforming lives, advancing communities. The university now has this perfect case study to say to future generations of people that may be considering higher education or uh, tritons that may come back or people and saying, you know, this is, we literally did what we said we were going to do and we were a symbol of leadership and we went out and we took care of what we were supposed to do. So, um, mm -hmm. so how does the pride and the responsibility and the um, and the level of commitment that each of, that each of you has and everything like that. How do you feel that ties into this year's theme? What is it's a great um, transforming lives. The a number of volunteers that come to help at the vaccination clinic are AmeriCorps volunteers, and these are students at the University of Guam. And I had an opportunity to speak with a few of them who are first year students. And over the course of two semesters have yet to sit in a classroom at the university, but they find themselves at the field house, you know, sometimes four hours a day on the weekends, they're here for the full shift from one to seven. And that's their first interaction at the university level. And so they have yet to sit in the classroom, but they're a big part of the university's response to this, uh, to support this vaccination clinic. And so it's transforming their lives even before they actually step foot into the official academic life or their academic career. And so to be a part of this early on with everything that's surrounding their academic experience, they're looking forward to fixing Guam and getting Guam healthy and being a part of that so that they eventually can find themselves with their classmates and with their professors and, and truly experiencing the university life here. And so yes, transforming lives, advancing communities it's even starting with our first year students and their experience at the university is being part of this help. And so again, 
it's a tremendous effort from a whole bunch of people from the AmeriCorps, Sir Guam, university community, the Guam National Guard, and of course the folks at Public Health. And so it's it's been an honor to be a part of this, this energy and this movement to get Guam healthy again. Yeah, there may be kids that are considering, you know, like high school seniors that are saying, you know, oh, okay, I'm embarking on the next phase of my life. I could go into the military, I could go into the private sector, I could work at Gov Guam, I could be a policeman, a fireman, whatever, but they see the good work that you and your team have done. And they're like, that's exactly what I aspire to be. Like, I, I want to exhibit that kind of leadership. And I want to be part of, you know, a community who really practices what they preach. So, you know, kudos to, to all of you and everything for doing such an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you for all your coverage and for all the information you've been providing to the island throughout. As well. well, I was going to say, Carlos, real, real quick before I let you go, like, um, I can completely empathize with what, um, you and the faculty and the students are going through because when I began at UOG in the fall of 1992, I believe that's when we had, was it Super Typhoon Yuri? We had that one string of, of typhoons. Like we had like four typhoons, like in a, over seven months, we were barely in class that first fall semester. Sure. And we didn't have the online option and everything like that. So, you know, I mean, it wasn't until the second half of my first year that we really knew what it was like to be in college. Sure. And, and that's been a tremendous effort with our OIT department and all the faculty and all the leadership here is, you know, being able to pivot and to, to continue to deliver high quality education to our students. And so that's always been a, the task at hand and we're still learning day to day. All right. All right, Carlos. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Jesus Masi. Thank you very much. Be All safe. Right. Okay. And, and when this, uh, oops, let me